Now, spring is just around the corner, but if you can't wait to bring some colour into your home, Kelly Brook might just have the answer. And we're talking... How are you OK? All right. right. I'm a you bit flustered. <laughs> I was trying to be serious, but it all went out the window. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> that right. bed will never okay. be the same again, that's Let's for sure. Let's focus. Now, the children are out the room. Pot plants. Yes, pot plants. Now, I haven't been able to get out in my garden because of... I mean, they broke the bed. They wrecked the whole house. I'm never having him round for tea. No, I, I agree completely. <laughs> um, okay. So, go on. Sorry. Sorry. We're so, you. basically, I've not been able to get out in the garden. So, I thought this week we would just focus on inside mm -hmm. and pot plants and house plants and uh, basically not, not how to, like, keep them alive, but how to make them thrive. OK. okay. So, first of all, we're going to look at these little prickly ones over here. Yep. <laughs> Succulents and cactuses mm -hmm. are very easy to keep <laughs> Crack on, crack on. <laughs> keep going, keep going. They're very easy to keep alive, mm -hmm. but the misconception is that they don't need water. They do need plenty of water. Do they take water from the atmosphere? No, these ones don't. Those are air plants. Yeah, they're the air ones. You don't ah, need anything for them. OK. So, basically, with these... This is why all your succulent, succulents have died. <laughs> succulents. <laughs> oh, you think I've got a succulent? <laughs> so, what I would suggest is keep them near a window so they get some sunlight, but not too much sunlight, because they can go a little bit yellow. Mm -hmm. And I would tend to just spritz them like this. Instead of actually properly Instead of, watering yeah, them. Yeah, because if you water them, you are really kind of going to... You're probably going to overwater too them. Too much. And it's too much. So a little bit of morning little, dew in the desert. A bit of a mm. spritz, like, mm. exactly. That's Maybe, okay. like, once a week, once every two weeks, so not too much. But they're pretty self-sufficient. They're great on a windowsill. If you're going on holiday, I would suggest getting a little bowl, putting some pebbles in there, and then just filling it with water, and you can just pop them on top... And, and then it'll kind of just water just, itself. Yeah, so they'll just kind of needs. draw the water and the moisture in from the bottom and they'll be fine when you get back. Mm -hmm. OK. So that's great. But what I really love about living room plants, is that's where we are at the moment, is making a statement. So what we've got here is a beautiful orchid. And they are so beautiful, they're pretty hard to keep alive. I know, because we fuss over them, because they're so beautiful. We're like, we don't want them to die, we don't want them to die. So we're always watering them. So really all you need is a shot glass full of water once a week and that's all they need. Oh. And then what you need to do when they do a eventually start dying off. Just deadhead them so it keeps them looking lovelier. And, and they're pretty, that's it. That's all you have to do. Because like, mine look like that for about a week and then I'm, I've got pots of sticks I all know. over the house. I know. They can be divas, but I think what you've got to do is just not overwater them. They do like quite a lot of sunlight as well. So if they're oh, in okay. a shady place, they won't like that. So make sure they have some sunlight, but again, not too much. Okay. So you kind of just have to be really careful with them. All right. What's Good. the milk for? <laughs> well, this is for the Swiss cheese plant. Of course this is my. <laughs> This is my favourite plant. I've got one of these in my living room. Swiss cheese. So Swiss it's got holes cheese. in it. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? Oh, it it makes such a statement. I absolutely love these plants. Now, they like a little bit of kind of like dappled lights and, again, not too much. But what happens is they do absorb a lot of moisture in the air. And then what happens is you get these little speckles on the leaves. And because the leaves are so beautiful, the best thing to do is get some milk and a little cotton pad like this and you just put some milk on and then you just gently rub the milk over the leaf like this. You have to sort of... <coughs> yeah, Excuse and, you, and it makes them super shiny. Isn't that going to stink? No. You don't put... I'll probably put too much on. When it goes you, off? No, what you just mean? wipe it. So you don't leave it sitting on the leaf. And how often are you meant to be doing that? Well, whenever you see them looking a bit, like, dusty or a little bit kind of speckly. I see what you mean. And it keeps them looking all lovely and waxy and it's, and it's really great. And again, you just want to fill the compost. If it's starting to dry out a little bit, what I like to do is pick the plant up. I actually put it in my bath. I give it a little shower, oh. wait for all the water to drain through and then just pop it back in the pot because that way it's not sitting in water because they don't like that. And the good thing uh, is also okay. what you've done there is actually you've made the Swiss cheese plant actually smell in time of cheese. <laughs> Exactly. You that that was very exactly clever. where I was going for. <laughs> right, let's go into right. the bedroom now. Sorry, it looks a bit of a mess. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so here, I feel like in the bedroom you want to create a very calming environment, not like yes, the one we've just you seen. Do. <laughs> so I would suggest a lovely lavender plant. I would never think to put a lavender plant in a bedroom. I know, but you always buy like these little kind of like sprays, yeah. don't you? Like what lavender mist idea? and your pillow and whatnot. You don't need a spray. You just need a lavender plant and they smell so lovely. Again, and they last all right inside, do they? Yeah, they're fine. They're that's really fine. low maintenance. They, they, they're fine in shady areas. And again, don't water it too much. They really don't like having wet feet, so it's only a tiny little bit of water. But, I mean, so many people suffer from insomnia, and that is a really easy way you just, just to... You can just lean over and go, like, in the middle of the night, if you can't sleep, yeah. just go like that. 
I know, it's lovely. And it's there. I really I like know. that. I had a massage in a lavender field last year. Do you remember, remember that film that? I did for it's you? Beautiful. So lovely. <laughs> Not for you. <laughs> for the show. <laughs> So it, it was really nice. It looks lovely. <laughs> well, I'm and glad you had a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> and this one? OK, this is a snake plant. Now, what this does, this um, is oxygenating. So there's so many things in the house that are toxic. I'm allergic to formaldehyde. I thought I had hay fever. But formaldehyde is a chemical that's on a lot of indoor furniture. Oh, wow. And so what this snake plant does at night, it just emits all this oxygen in the room and it gets rid of all that. So if you've got allergies, this is brilliant. More than a normal plant. Yes, yeah, yeah. Wow. A snake How plant is fantastic. Is it's one of the best plants to oxygenate a room. So I definitely recommend a snake plant. What a plant. clever little plant. Especially like this time of year when we are starting to get <coughs> allergies and whatnot. Okay. Okay. okay so bathroom now. Bathroom. Now, what I love about the bathroom is that it's great for tropical plants. So obviously, bathrooms get very humid. So the humidity loving plants absolutely thrive in a bathroom. So down here, we've got an aloe vera plant. Now, this is just a beautiful plant anyway, yeah. but obviously, it. You know, if you break off a stem, like what we've done well, here... Well, we have an aloe vera plant in our kitchen. Oh, do you? And Steph yesterday splashed herself because she was turning over some a rack of ribs. Yeah. And it splashed over her hand, and immediately you go straight for the aloe vera, yeah. break yeah, a bit off, put it thing. on her hand. Look at that. It's yeah. lovely. It's so lovely. And it does. It heals all burns, all sorts of ailments. I mean, I put mine into, like, face creams or face masks that I make at home, and it just feels so lovely on the skin. So that's a really good plant to have around anyway, like in the kitchen or the yeah. bathroom. But they love the bathroom because bathrooms use usually quite dark anyway. And you've got a fern there as well? So this fern, I mean, ferns love shady areas. They love moisture. I've got tons of these in my garden, but what I love is that you can bring them inside yeah. as well. But they're very acid-loving plants. So the other thing you can do is brew up a cup of tea, which is what we've done here, let it cool down, and then you just want to feed the fern every now and again with a little bit of tea, and there's lots of... Um, things in this tea that it will just... It's like a fertiliser, really. How funny is that? You yeah. think. And I mean, it just fertilises. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank, thank you, Kelly. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you. It's my house. Nice. <laughs> you have a lovely house. Sorry about thank your you. bed. <laughs>